Hello everybody, welcome to CAD Training Part 1, brought to you by FRC Team 4272. Now, before we get started, if you will go to onshape.com and either sign in, or if you already have an account, go to sign in and then click on sign up, and then we'll go and make an education account. Like I said, if you already have an account, sign in. Before we continue, I would like to say that this is actually an old video that I have remade because the original video was made during a Zoom meeting and there was a lot of stalling involved. So hopefully this one is a lot better. Without further ado, if you have already made your account, welcome to CAD training. So something to remember, we're obviously teaching this for a reason. It's perfectly okay if you don't understand something. Just contact the team if you have a question, or if you know somebody that knows on shape, just ask them. It's what we're here for, and there are no dumb questions. Your best friend is the undo button, because this is CAD, so mistakes are okay. Without further ado, let's get started. What is CAD, first of all? Well, it's computer-aided design. It's 3D modeling in the sense that we're going to use it for. It's used to plan and design for engineering purposes because it saves time and materials. You don't have to, you, you're eliminating the guesswork, basically. So here are some examples. The one on the left here is a swerve module. The one here is our electrical board from Infinite Recharge. Go team. This is a violin and this is an engine piston. Whoops. Basically, it shows that you can design anything your heart desires if you have the skills. Onshape, which is the software we're using, is completely cloud-based. It's kind of like Google Docs, but for CAD. Basically, you can share with your entire team and you can have multiple people working on it at once. And you don't have to save because it's cloud-based. What are we making today? Well, today I'm just teaching you the basics of CAD in a way that is especially useful for first. We're going to do a very step-by-step -step example of a plate with a hex shaft and a bearing to kind of get you started. Now we're going to go over to our Onshape tab. And if you're already logged in, you should see a screen like this, except maybe if you're a first time user with a lot less stuff because I have a lot of CAD projects. Anyways, you're going to go to create, and there are a lot of options here depending on what you want to do, but we are going to click on document. And you're going to want to name it. Let's say, um, for me, I'd put probably my team number. Just something that makes sense, because you don't want to name it unicorns unless you're actually catting a unicorn. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And now you wait for your workspace to load. You know, you're catting a 3D design, so sometimes it might take a minute to load. You just have to be patient with Onshape. You will be taken to an empty part studio. A part studio is a place to make individual parts. You have a name down here, and you can go ahead and rename that to late. <laughs> had to remember which part we were doing first. Okay, so you'll want to rename that to plate. You just right click and go to rename and rename that plate. Now you can click sketch in the upper left hand corner. Sketch is the 2D drawing in your part studio. And then you'll have to select a sketch plane because you can't just put it anywhere. So now you click this little cube in the upper right hand corner and you'll click the word top if you clicked the top plane and it'll reorient your view so you're looking at more of a kind of piece of paper. Now you have a different toolbar on top than you would have had before. You can make two-dimensional shapes in a sketch. For today's purposes, you're going to click this mini rectangle. It should say corner rectangle. And when you roll over all of these, they'll give you a name. And then if you stay for longer, it'll give you instructions and what the tool does. But anyways, click on corner rectangle and you're going to put one corner on the origin which makes it just easier to define. And then you'll put the other corner somewhere out here. You'll see that these sides start out blue 
and you don't want to end up with blue sides. It's fine to start, but you don't want to end up with that. By the way, to zoom, you just scroll. And to pan, I believe it's con... No, you just... Okay, yeah. Control and le right mouse button. Yeah. So we need to tell it what size to be. This little tool over here with the two arrows is the dimension tool. Once you select that, you can select your side and it's automatically in inches. You can change that in your settings if you're if you rather use centimeters. Uh, in this case, we'll type, let's say, two inches and then press enter. Now, we want to have a square for this case. You can either use the dimension tool again on this side, or you can click this drop down button and use equal. And a lot of these have keyboard shortcuts, so you could also just press E and it'll come up with equals. And then you press the two sides that you want to be equal. Now there are some advantages and disadvantages to using dimension versus equal or any of these other uh, defining tools here. Basically with the dimensioning tool, all these dimensions are visible, but when you have a really complicated sketch, you don't want to have uh, an onslaught of numbers everywhere. So you don't, you don't want to dimension everything. Equals and other tools, your sketch is a lot neater, but it's harder to find errors unless you roll over and you can see which parts are equal. Now you'll notice that the sketch turned black. That means it's defined. And that just means that somebody else can't come in and, you know, drag it around. Because before, I could do this. And that's bad. And so what I was doing there is just pressing Control-Z, which is a keyboard shortcut. And so I'm just going to redo this, because what I was doing was undo button. And now we have a plate. But the plate needs a hole. We could place it and dimension it into the middle, so we'd have, you know, one inch on this side, one inch on this side. Or on shape makes this part really easy. So you're going to click on the center point circle tool, which means you're just going to pick a center and then one point on the circle. So you're going to roll your mouse over the midpoints on this side and on this side. And you'll know it's the midpoint when this little square shows up. And then on shape will know that you want to use these. And then two little lines will come up when you put your mouse directly in the middle. And now you click. And that gives you your center point of your circle. Then you bring your mouse out somewhere over here and click again. And if you're just making, you know, one shape with one dimension, like a circle, then there's this little number that appears down here. You can just go ahead and type a number. You don't even need to click on the dimension tool, which I learned from one of my mentors, I believe. But you can also just, you know, click the dimension tool if the little number disappears or if you're making multiple things at once. Now, before you do anything else, you don't want to just exit your page or go to your assembly or anything. You want to make sure that you have everything saved because on shape, you don't need to save it to your computer, but you still need to make sure that it's saved. You saved your progress to the cloud. So you click this little green check mark thing, and now your sketch is saved. So now you'll want to extrude, which just means you're kind of you're you're giving it a, a thickness. And there's other tools to make it three dimensional as well, which I'll talk about in a minute. So you can just click this, and this is the extrude button, which is also Shift E. And to rotate this thing you right click and drag. So over here, you'll want it to be blind for now. And then you'll want your depth to be quarter inch. And don't forget to click the green check mark. There are also other ways to make a two dimensional sketch into a 3D part, which includes revolving it around an axis, sweeping it along a path, or lofting two similar sketches towards each other. And I have pictures of this over here.
So as you can see, you're bringing, for revolve, you're bringing it in a circle. For sweep, you're kind of dragging it along that path. And for lofting, you're kind of putting two similar sketches together in a 3D world, as you can see. Back to on shape. When making a plate, you'll usually want to fillet the corners, which just means you're making them slightly rounded so that when you actually manufacture this, you don't stab yourself. So you're going to click the fillet option, and you're going to select these four corners that you want rounded. So they'll highlight themselves. One, two, and if you have a really slow computer or a really slow internet, it can sometimes lag. I like to make it quarter inch. Congratulations, you just made your first part in Onshape. Now don't forget, you can rename the parts over here as well as the, the part studio, because you can actually make multiple parts in a part studio. But if you're just making one, you just right click, rename, and make it the same name as the part studio. Simple. Now, we have a plate. What now? Well, you're going to want to make another part to put with this plate. So you're going to click this little plus button in the lower left hand corner, and you're going to create a new part studio. Boom, new empty part studio. And all your files are down here. So if you wanted to get back to your plate, you just click on the plate. Now we're going to make a hex shaft. So guess what you're going to name it? Hex shaft. First, do you guys remember how to make a sketch and pick a plane? Well, you click on sketch, you click on plane, and then you go to the cube in the corner and click on top. Or if you clicked one of the side planes, you can click on that too. Now we are going to use the inscribed polygon tool, which just makes it easier to have all your sides equal. So first of all, you're going to click your center. And then I like to click straight above the origin because that way it's easier to define. And now once you click above the origin, don't move your mouse. I'll show you what happens when you move your mouse. This is a polygon tool, and so it gives you multiple shapes. So when you move your mouse, it gives you different number of sides. We're going to keep it at six, though. So you're just going to click again, and you have a polygon. Now, sometimes the tool will stay selected, so you can just either deselect it or the escape key also works. When dimensioning it, I actually prefer to dimension the circle just to make sure that you're using, that you're making it standard, kind of. And for most hex shafts, at least the ones that we use on our team, it's going to be half inch. And then you'll want to scroll in just a little bit. And then now you have this little hexagon. You can click the green check mark again and extrude. So it's shift E, or there's this little button with the blocks in the corner. Then you'll want to click on your sketch. And I'd say pick a number between five and 10 for this. Go seven point. No, just kidding. Seven inches. Don't forget the check mark. Now, time for assemblies. In Onshape, when you create a new document, it automatically gives you one part studio and one assembly. Did anybody notice what I forgot? Yep, gotta rename. Because it makes it easier to put things into an assembly when everything has a name. Otherwise, you're just using part one, part two, part three. And it gets really annoying when you're sending somebody a file that you need manufactured and they're looking for part one in their drive. So now you'll go to an assembly. And an assembly is where you can constrain multiple parts together. It's kind of like defining a sketch, but three-dimensional.
let's go ahead and rename this one. Um, we'll just rename it something like hex and plate full assembly because this is going to be our full assembly for this CAD tutorial. So no, there's no parts in here. That's because they're in separate locations, and so you'll want to put them into your assembly. In this case, we're going to stay on this current document tab, and they're conveniently right here in this menu. So you'll click hex shaft, plate, boom, check mark. And now you have these. But you can still move them around. You might have noticed that I said we're also going to put a bearing in here. You don't have to CAD the bearing, because one way to get COTS items or commercial off the shelf like bearings in a CAD is to go to the website for a CAD file, like uh, McMaster Car is one example. That's a place where you get hardware items like bearings or bolts. Also, Onshape has standard parts like bolts, and other teams have created libraries within Onshape for you to use. That's another advantage of Onshape. You can use other people's public files. And so one place to access them is the MKCAD library. So let's use it. So you're going to click insert again, but this time you're going to go to other documents and click on public. You're going to type in MKCAD into the search bar and then hit enter. And this can take a minute to load because there are a lot of public documents with the name MKCAD because it's so popular. There's many different categories conveniently organized for you. You're going to scroll down to bearings. Find the hex bearing that says half inch hex inner diameter of 1.125 because if you'll notice, this is a hex shaft of half an inch and this is 1.125 which is why we chose those dimensions, because that is a bearing that we commonly have in our shop. So as you can see, it's here. And you'll want the flanged one. So there you go, green check mark, and it's in your assembly. So mating constrains two parts together, which means it just attaches or limits them. Most of the time, you can either use fastened or group mate. Fastened is where it removes all freedom between two parts. You could also do this with multiple planar mates or a planar and a slider mate, and I'll explain those mates in a minute. But basically, it's like glue. It glues your parts together. And group is when if you have a group of parts that are already in the right place together, like if you import something from one of those other websites I mentioned, or sometimes MKCAD parts don't come fully constrained together, instead of like trying to figure out how they fit together, you can just click group and select all of them. Some other common mates include planar, slider, and parallel, which are three that I use the most often other than fastened. Basically, planar is two flat surfaces will always slide along the same plane. Basically, if you put two pieces of paper together, those are planes. Slider is when two usually circular parts can translate along the same line. For example, a telescope. Parallel is when two flat surfaces are always parallel to each other. So it's like those pieces of paper, but now they don't have to be contacting each other. For this, we'll use fasten and slider because the hex shaft will still be able to slide. So you're going to select the fasten tool and then either the underside of the bearing's lip or the very bottom of the bearing because this part right here, this wall is the same thickness as this wall. So you'll wanna make sure this little colored thingy is in the middle because then that middle will constrain to this middle. And I like to click solve just to make sure it looks right. Because sometimes if you have a bunch of parts mated together, solve will um, kind of make it look like it's supposed to. So now you'll click the check mark 
and this should be fixed in there. So now if you drag this around, it's like it's press fitted or glued in there. Now we want to put the hex shaft in there. So we are going to click on the slider mate. And then once again, you'll want to make sure the little colored icon is in the middle. But this time you're going to click on the middle of the hex shaft. And you can either click on the middle of the bearing or the plate. I'm just going to go bearing because that's what the hex shaft is actually in contact with. And then solve green check mark. And this time the hex shaft is not actually fixed to it. It's, it's sliding along that same line. So I can move it side to side together, but then up and down it still slides through because that's realistic. And now you have successfully survived your first CAD tutorial. Ta-da! I would recommend using the Onshape Learning Center if you want other detailed lessons of how to use Onshape. I also made a Google document, which I'll be sharing in, in all the other links below, of resources to look at, specifically for CAD and Onshape. If you have questions, you can either use the Onshape Help Center or email us at firstteam4272 at gmail.com, which I am currently putting on the screen. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this more than the original video.